I would like to welcome you to the second session on accelerating the decarbonization of fisheries in the Caribbean. From science-based target to climate mitigation finance. With these few words, I would like to introduce the um, Honorable Samuel Huggins, Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries, Marine Resources, Cooperative, Entre Entrepreneurship and Creative e Economy, St. Kitts and Nevis. Welcome, Mr. Minister. Good morning. It's a pleasure being here again uh, to my esteemed colleagues and all of you distinguished guests. Allow me to say how much of an honor it is to welcome you again to this side event of the Fourth International Conference on Small Island Developing States. Today, in this seminar, we will focus on the topic accelerating the decarbonization of fisheries in the Caribbean from science-based targets to climate mitigation finance. Today, we are indeed here to address the realities. The reality is that the fisheries and aquaculture sectors contribute low CO2 emissions per unit output as compared to other protein sources. However, it will take a collective effort from all sectors and all industries globally to address the issue of increasing global temperatures. As small island developing states, we depend upon our ocean resources for economic growth, but rising ocean temperatures are having a very negative impact on our fisheries and marine resources. Increased global temperatures are changing the chemical of our ocean, increasing sea level rise and ocean acidification. It is with this understanding that we must play our part in contributing towards the decarbonization of fisheries and aquaculture in our region and moving from science-based targets onward to climate mitigation finance. Access to finance is crucial. If the sector is to retool itself and implement critical mitigation and adaptation measures, such as strengthening its resilience, especially in the post-COVID era, Fossil fuel remains the main source of energy to propel our fishing vessels and fish processing facilities, unfortunately. And one area that we can target that is a very low hanging fruit is to consider suitable emission standards for marine engines used in our fishery sector. Conventional two stroke engines produce approximately 14 times as much ozone forming pollution as four stroke engine and 25 to 30% of the fuel and oil of two-stroke engine is discharged unburned into the atmosphere. So, encouraging our fishers to use clean burning engines, which provide faster acceleration and improve fuel economy, should be considered as we seek to decarbonize our fisheries and aquaculture sectors. One of the goals of Sinkis and Nevis is to have an energy sector reliant on renewable energy Currently, we are focusing on geothermal and solar energy in particular. This means that the carbon footprint of our fishing facilities will be reduced and it sets the platform for the introduction of electric motors to be used in our region. We must then bridge the gap between ambition and action through innovative climate mitigation finance. This involves leveraging both public and private sector investments to fund projects that enhance energy efficiency, adopt renewable energy sources, and promote sustainable fishing practices. And we stand here today with the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism and its dedication to understanding and addressing the impact of small scale fisheries on emission. And the goal is that together, we can all chart a path towards a sustainable and resilient future for our fisheries and aquaculture sectors of all of our regions. And with that, I wish to welcome all of you to again another side event and another fruitful discussion as we had yesterday and wish this every success. Thank you, good morning.